Comcast. Look, you know there are 45 seconds of logos in this movie. I don't need to point it out like an asshole, but we've also got a reputation to uphold, and sometimes you gotta play the hits. Reading, you see? Also, in case you want to defend this movie as solely a metaphor, just remember it set up the entire film by giving factual information that set the rules the entire film will have to live up to. Spoiler alert, it won't. Okay, let's just get this out of the way. Jordan Peele's attention to detail and symbolism is astonishing right from the beginning. The Elevens that represent the twin ones, the movies like Chud, The Man with Two Brains, Goonies, and more. The Twin Towers mentioned in the Hands Across America ad, both as a symbol of tragedy and another instance of twins, or Eleven. The twin reflection of young Adelaide in the TV between commercials. Even this hanging wicker sculpture is ominously reminiscent of the idea of the tether. I'm just saying, for as much as I will eventually bring down on some of the story nonsense, the eye for detail here kicks major ass. Now, can I please get back to being a nip picky asshole. The scene is set in 1986, but this VHS edition of Chud was not released until at least 1993. Whew, I feel much better now. Jeez, the opening of this movie has more 80s nostalgia porn than an episode of the Goldbergs. Right now you could walk away with a prize from the second level, or you could keep going for a prize from the third level. I won number 11. Wait, the second level has a thriller t-shirt in 1986 that's amazing what do they have on the third level the actual madonna this dude walked up to this game like he was the whack-a-mole champ but he's spending the entire time hitting the same goddamn hole at this rate he won't even qualify for the starship t-shirt on the bottom level okay we aren't even five minutes in and i may already be sick of the 11 showing up everywhere is it possible to be both brilliant and excessive is this movie possibly brilcessive you're telling me that the nexus to the underworld is right next to a popular carnival spot like how has nobody wandered up on this before now even by accident also, there are tons of motherfuckers at this boardwalk, but not one of them is at or near this funhouse. Also, also, what's the deal with creepy magical doohickeys at carnivals? Soltar, Vision Quest, that guy in the trench coat in the parking lot? The director said, let's have her drop a candied apple into the sand without even taking a bite, so the audience not only knows this girl's an asshole, but also because it's super symbolic and important in ways only the truly enlightened could ever understand. What's the point of Vision Quest? Is it supposed to be fun? Scary? Educational? Existential? Seriously, this funhouse is more tonally confused than the last season of Game of Thrones. movie has a character whistle because it's creepy and will set up a future plot twist cliche. Okay, fine, it's mostly because I just saw Brightburn, but you know that is in other movies too. We spend the next two and a half minutes zooming out from Chekhov's rabbits, and I'm just gonna say it. This movie has gonads the size of softballs, although I'm not sure the way it keeps pulling them out and waving them in my face is doing itself any favors. We're going to the beach? Uh, later, once we get settled. What beach? Santa Cruz. How did Adelaide not know this? Especially given the proximity of their vacation house. Also, Jason says he left his magic trick here last year, so they've obviously been here before if not several times. So why is the beach thing just now coming up? <laughs> Kids! I would say ambulance shadowing here, except that this whole movie is so full of shadowing, I'd swear it's Plato's allegory of the cave, which it kind of is. And come to think of it, kind of what I do too. Uh-oh. Uh, the madness is just crushing me. Please send help. Baby, that's why you can't play in here. Didn't this happen last year? What the hell? There's one tiny area of this large lake house with a door that locks from the outside, and that's the place this little guy likes to play? Why are we even talking about anuses? Why would Cinemas and staff meetings. This f***ing family is so happy early in this movie that they have to know they're in a horror movie. Man, this is a long-ass beach, but somehow Gabe chooses to camp right next to the trauma house, seriously like he knows what happened when Adelaide was a kid and is actively trolling her. So this is the tether of the Jeremiah 1111 guy that got killed a few minutes ago. But how? He killed his doppelganger, evaded the authorities, and made it all the way to this spot in record time without anyone noticing. I think we're gonna head out. Damn, Gabe had a massive beach boner for coming all the way out here. But they're seriously packing it in after like 15 minutes and a bit of a scare. Kid draws something creepy to portend terror and a horror movie cliche. I get that M'Baku is setting up for some super sexy man spreading here, but I'm just thinking how the hell do these two sleep in this bed together? He's crushing that thing like he's Will Ferrell in an elf shower. There was another girl in there. She looked like me. Exactly like me. Given the movie's final reveal, what sense does telling Gabe about this make? Adelaide has been hiding this secret for her entire life, but chooses right now to spill the tea? She was real. Okay, look, I was gonna wait until the tether reveal to go on a long rant about how little sense this whole idea makes, and don't you worry, that's still coming, but I have to mention here. How do the tethered have the same clothing as the regular folk? Where did it come from? Do they make it? Does it mystically appear on them as their doppelgangers change clothing? Are the rabbits also magical tailors and hairstylists? Okay, just breathe, Jeremy. Save it for later. I'm pretty sure I could kick your ass, so she looks like you. <laughs> Okay. Man, Winston Duke acts so goddamn much like Jordan Peele in this movie that he really should have just saved some money and played the character himself. This is like watching Kenneth Branagh do a Woody Allen impression in Celebrity. There's a family in our driveway. Is the kid trying to be creepy? Seems like he's a pretty normal kid, and every other kid would at least be kind of worried at this point of the home invasion. Can I help you? What's the point of the silent staring? They're here specifically to kill the Wilsons and start the revolution, right? Do they taste better when they're scared or something? <laughs> 
Over all the rustling in the house and the heavy front door, they can hear the whistling list clearly. Hell, Red's not even at the house yet. F*** you, jump scares! Even when you're done by a master of horror, f*** you and your jump scary faces. Also, why'd it take Lil Deadpool this long to break in anyway? Did he seriously time this for maximum creepiness? Holy f Was that wood doused in lighter fluid or something? Or if they're gas logs, that gas is dangerously on, man. It's us. Roll rabbits! The girl met a handsome prince and fell in love, but the shadow met Abraham. Dude, he's standing right there! The girl had her first child. A beautiful baby girl. But the shadow, she came back to a little monster. Dude, she's standing right there. How's Gabe's tether this much stronger than him? They should be the exact same build and body, right? Yeah, I know Gabe is hobbled and all, but that's only because he couldn't hold the door in the first place. Little girl. Run! Oh, because she's a track runner at school. I see that Us subscribes to the Bumblebee School of Obscure Athletic Character Traits that can be conveniently used later in the movie. Stretching your arms before running. Ah, sudden indelible image that manages to be creepy. <laughs> Please, no, no. Damn it, why doesn't Abraham kill Gabe? He's a sitting duck, man. He should be dead as f***ing disco right now. What the f***? There are obviously houses out here, so why didn't Zora at least attempt to call for some help? This is an excellent horror movie, but there are also some questionable decisions that are just the side of cliches. We want to take our time. We've been waiting for this day for so long. Yeah, but Red's the only one that truly wants to take her time, right? The other tethers just show up on all fools almost immediately. Movie's gone out of its way to show Abraham is an oafish brute, but he managed to find a giant trash bag, stuff Gabe into it, then drag him to the boat, which he's able to adequately start and drive. <laughs> Polo! How much does this coffee table weigh? Have you ever known a coffee table like this to be too heavy to simply move over and grab that poker? <laughs> this works. You know, this movie's great, G-R-A-T-E, great, but once you know the twist, it ain't really scary. And that's not necessarily a bad thing, since you can revel in the little things that make this movie the aforementioned great. But it is supposed to be a horror film, and I'm a big ol' asshole, so my hands are tied with a synod. You're telling me that janky-ass boat motor is still working after it ground up the better part of a fully grown man? This is an awesome sequence, but the movie should know that any scene scored by Good Vibrations officially belongs to Cameron Crowe and tech support. <laughs> Tex is literally too dumb to die. This sequence of the kids silently banded together to rescue their mom with the backdrop of NWA's F*** the Police playing was one of my favorite moments of 2019, so I'm gonna remove the f*** out of this sim. This fight scene has more unnecessary gymnastics than that bullshit in the Lost World Jurassic Park. Man, these Joker previews just keep getting stranger and stranger. Like most movie villains, the Tethered remain true to the kill the secondary characters quickly and efficiently, but capture and delay the death for the main character's motto. <laughs> Wait, this gets her attention? When the loud, violent deaths of the two children right down the hall did not? <laughs> Tetherball? How does 911 keep you on hold all night long? Okay, I'd maybe buy that the parents don't think to check Twitter or Facebook or any actual news apps. Or even think until just now to turn on the TV. But Zora has been constantly on her phone this whole movie, so why doesn't she suggest it? This dude continues to f***ing film as he's getting walked way up on by a weapon-wielding wildling. And as far as I'm concerned, he gets what he deserves. Whoa. Whoa! 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 What is up with the rando deaths, non-deaths of the tethers? Handmaid's Tale was taken out by one swift bonk by a grade schooler, but one of the friend's twins survived a massive head wound and a plunge off the balcony? I mean, I guess it's a little freaky that it's their car, but does this really crack the top 50 of weirdest things they've seen over the last few hours? Also, why are they stopping? There's plenty of room over on the left to go around the car fire. How is Jason controlling Pluto here? Yes, we saw the hand mirroring in the closet, but we later learned that Red broke them all out of their need to tether. I'm thinking this is just another convenient happenstance that allows the movie to have its cool twin freaks fire walk with me moment. Man, Red Alade sure does have a good memory of her former digs. Wasn't she like six when she left? I don't even remember the name of the street I lived on when I was six, man. I gotta say, for an unholy den of hellspawn, they've got some pretty nice f***ing escalators. I mean, them s*** are department store quality. How we can hide here? Probably got bandages and stuff. I have to assume the Wilsons aren't the only ones that have killed their tethers. So what's up with the survivors? Are the doppelgangers gonna eventually round the stragglers up? The Tylers tried to kill them, so it's not like they have to only kill their own shadows. It was humans that built this place. I believe they figured out how to make a copy of the body, but not the soul. 
And there it is, the explanation. It's scientific. They are soulless clones. This combined with kicking the movie off with that tunnel explanation text sets actual ground rules for what's happening here. Just remember, movie, you didn't have to do this, but you decided to set your world's rules. And that means we have to take you to task for breaking them. This is gonna hurt us as much as it hurts you, but you don't have nobody to blame but yourself. <clears throat> they created the tethered so they could use them to control the ones above. Yeah, but all of them? Like, at once? It's clear from your Hands Across America project that the Red Rovers are at least nationwide, which is currently around 327 million people. Are you saying these scientists created a soulless body for the whole country? If they did one a minute, that would take over 600 years, and that's before we consider... For generations, the tether continued without direction. Generations? Generations? Let's be generous and say that this was early 1900s. Do you know how many people have lived and died in the last 100 years? How were the red dead bodies disposed of? If they didn't create a clone for every single person, then how did multiple generations stay synced up? And if they did, what about people from other countries that moved here? What about immigration? What about kids from marriages between a U.S. and non-U.S. resident? Those kids just appear out of nowhere? And let's go back to those tunnels mentioned at the beginning. Thousands of miles of unused tunnels? You think that's enough to house 300 million people? Even if they were packed in like sardines, that's not enough space. How many rabbits would it take to feed them all? What about water? Where do they sh They don't all have beards or hairy legs, so how do they shave? Do they have sex to produce the clone offspring? How does the birth control above factor into birth control below? And let's talk about transportation. It's obvious the tethered are in the same location as their counterparts as seen in the shots of all the people at the amusement park doing things like eating or roller coasting. But how do they stay together when the geographical spaces are so drastically different? And what about this ornate plan? How did Red communicate it across the entire country? How do those that didn't see the dance untether simultaneously? Where did they get millions of jumpsuits? Gloves? Scissors? Damn it, movie, you have some of the most impressive symbolism and metaphor I've ever seen. Why did you have to ruin it by tethering yourself to such nonsensical world building? Honestly, considering the quality of food I've gotten at local carnivals, the raw rabbit may be the better choice. Huh, I didn't realize they were putting out two remakes of Suspiria within months of each other. Lupita Nyon went. Wait, the dad said she was only gone for 15 minutes, and the mom seems to agree. So that means that the real Adelaide wandered all the way down to Vision Quest, made her way through the Hall of Mirrors, got choked out by Red, who dragged her all the way down to the Tether region, chained her up, changed shirts, then went all the way back to the boardwalk? In 15 minutes? It takes me more than 15 minutes to pee, for Christ's sake! All this said, this final twist happens, showing the beauty of the idea that we are the same as any enemy. Them is us, us is them. The caution that when we try to judge others, we indict ourselves, it's almost enough to make me give all those sins back. I said almost. Run like a man, you get a shoot. Are you a person who loves this show but doesn't own any clothes? Are you sitting there completely nude wondering if there's any way you can display your love for CinemaSins properties while also presenting yourself in an acceptable way in a public place? Good news, everyone! We here at the Sins team have launched a new merch store with the help of Teespring. With these products, you can cover your body in a multitude of ways. Want something a little breezy? Try this. This is a CinemaSins shirt shirt. Want something a bit more modest? This pullover hoodie has got you covered. We've even got a few badass posters and one killer mug that will distract everyone from the fact that you're not wearing pants. So, check out the links below and buy yourself a damn shirt for once. Will you, for the love of God, put on a f***ing shirt? Mug does not actually commit murder. What do you think, Daddy? Should we stop or keep going? I want the tiger. I know, honey, I know, but Mom's not exactly going pro here. What are you doing? It's a magic trick. I left it here last year. Okay, let's see it. How about a magic trick? Mrs. Bundy said something about Santa Cruz, about seagulls getting lost in a fog and then flying in towards the lights. We don't have any what is your quest? Oh, is that what you want? <laughs> yup. Because that's how you get ants. Hey. Okay, then. How about this? You take me to the ATM. <laughs> <laughs>